Let's go ahead and get warmed up here. I'm gonna just do, I'm just gonna start with a standing cat cow here. Get the butts and the guts, right? Okay, and what we're gonna do is just align that spine like Jenga blocks, right? Get that rib cage as over the hips as possible, okay? So, and let's just go ahead and, I like to put my hands on my hips for this one and get my shoulders activated too. I'm gonna lift the chest towards the ceiling as I stick out my tailbone to the back. Inhale and then opposite. You're gonna have to kind of bend your knees a little, really breathing, rolling the shoulders every time. Nice deep breaths, really articulating the spine using the hips. And I, I do apologize to you, our air conditioning is doing a funky, so if there's some extra noise, it's the maintenance here today, so please forgive me on that one. Just a couple more. Make sure that you are activating the core this entire time, okay? One more. And relax. Let's go ahead and just do some small reaches to the side. Get those muscles on the lateral part of the body moving. Try to leave the hips where they are for now. Nice deep breaths. Let's go ahead and do a few toe taps. Make sure that you're sucking that belly button in and up towards the spine, right? Bending those knees just slightly as the hips go back. Oh yeah, hamstrings are tight. And really making sure that you are breathing. Okay, nice deep breaths. Let's do a few more on each side. Remember, you don't have to touch your toes. You can reach for your knees. Nice deep breaths. One more on each side. Good. Let's just do some big circles with those shoulders. A few of those. And let's do some high knees. Try to leave your upper body where it is. That's a good ringtone. <laughs> so try not to sway that upper body. Keep it breathing. Keep your belly button tucked in towards your spine. A few more. So just because you're using your legs for this doesn't mean your core isn't working. You should actually feel that your core is getting a little bit of a challenge here. To the back now. Get those quads warmed up. Squeeze those glutes. Keep the hamstrings activated. I'm trying to keep my upper body stationary. It's like putting my feet back in the same footprint every single time, right? Good. Let's go ahead and just do a few uh, open the doors. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of roll my foot still on the ground here, just opening the hip to the side, really lifting and squeezing that hip, opening in the groin here, just a few of these. Go at whatever speed you want to go to. Make sure you get both sides. All right. Okay, so I think I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna use my ball a little bit today um, and the chair. So let's, we're gonna start with the guts part. We'll start with some core. And then I'd like to modify some planks today, okay? So before we do that, let's go ahead and just get that rectus abdominis a little bit warm, more warmed up, right? And the lateral obliques as well. Just these muscles in the front of the body here. So test your balance as well. You have a friend here if you need it, okay? But we're gonna, this is super dorky looking, I know. 
we're going to bring one knee up, arms up overhead. We're going to bring one knee up and we're going to kind of rotate at the ribs. So you may have to practice rotating like there's a little hinge right at your waist. You're not twisting your hips or your knees, right? And I, I think you can see that, right? I want to keep those hips exactly where they are. Arms up overhead and then we rotate the waist and just bring those arms on the outside there. And we're going to alternate here, nice and slow, really getting those core muscles and that balance warmed up for planks. Balance. My AC is off right now. So you should feel this right in here, side-ish of your belly. And your hips probably, because you're balancing so well, right? So two more on each side. Good. And let's go ahead using your coffee table. Uh, you, you can use your wall if you want to or straight up on the floor. Let's bring it back. There we go. I'm going to start on my hands. My wrists don't really have much patience for planks, so I try to get that out of the way quickly. So I'm just gonna start with my hands nice and spread out on my surface here. And I'm gonna get those shoulders as over the hands as possible, right? So we don't wanna be too far back, too much tension on the shoulder, okay? Oh, and uh, shoulder width too, right? Not too wide, more tension on the shoulder. Okay, so we're just gonna step it back one foot at a time. And hopefully you can see yourself or at least you have some kind of gauge what your spine is doing. So we're gonna get that spine as straight as possible. Don't let those hips drop down. Don't be up like this or like this, okay? Nice and straight line. And you're gonna hold. Belly button in towards that spine. My hands don't like this at all. Keep breathing. Suck in that belly button. And go ahead and do a modified down dog. Drop those heels. Stretch that body. Nice deep breaths. And deep inhale. Exhale. Back to your plank. Hold. One thing I see a lot of too is we is people dropping between the shoulder blades, right? Keep those shoulders nice and rigid, but don't squeeze them together. You'll feel that it hurts a little bit. You don't want that. Nice deep breaths. And deep breath again, and take a breather. Stretch those hands. If you were up onto the hands. If you need a modification for a plank, just let me know. All right, let's go ahead. That's the noise I'm talking about, sorry. Perfect timing. All right, so. I'm gonna go down into my elbows for the plank. Remember, the further you are towards parallel, the closer you are towards parallel, the harder the plank, right? So you could do it at an incline, okay? So I just like to do fists or you can clasp my hands, okay? And we're just gonna step back. Same concept here though. The shoulders are directly over the elbow. Keep that back nice and straight. Holding, breathing. Lengthen that body, keep breathing. And come down nice and slow onto the knees and just take a breath. We're gonna do one more of those. It's amazing how fast your strength in the core 
goes away. I was doing a minute planks last week, no problem, and now I'm struggling with 30 seconds. Ah, not fair. All right, so to get back up, uh, I like to just adjust my back first and then step back one foot at a time. Try to keep your neck in line as well, right? Don't be looking up, try to keep your gaze towards the floor. Breathing. And go ahead, step it out and take a break, grab a drink of water. Okay, I'm gonna take just a minute to stretch my core muscles here. Just gonna put my hands on top of my head here. And I'm gonna try, instead of pushing my hips forward, I'm gonna try like I'm leaping over something backwards, doing a really sweet backflip, okay? Bending at the rib cage, oh, just to stretch those abdominal muscles. And you can do that a couple times or a couple of those twists. All right, if you have a lower back injury or it's very hard for you to do um, twisting motions, really be careful about this next one here. We're gonna do some hip dips from a plank. Okay, so basically I'm gonna be in this plank position and I'm gonna move my hips from side to side. You may also feel this a little bit in the knee too. So those of you with knee injuries, please take it slow small, good quality movement, okay? So just get into that plank. See how long I can procrastinate this plank. Here we go. All right, nice flat back. And you're just gonna drop your butt just a little bit. You see how my knees are twisting? So you may have to step a little bit to take some pressure off your knees, but you should really be feeling this in the core, those low abdominals especially. Keep breathing. Let's do two more on each side. And step it out, come out of it nice and slow, and take a break. Whew. All right, add those to the least favorite list, right? Okay, so let's go ahead now. If you've got a shoulder injury, I wouldn't recommend this one. You may wanna do this against a wall to get the mechanics down right. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go back into that plank position, except this time, instead of rotating the hips, we're gonna try to rotate the upper body, okay? Finding that balance. And we're going to reach out to the side and then gently shift the weight, reach out to the side. Okay, so your hips will move a little bit, but you really should be working on that shoulder stability. Go for it. Nice deep breaths. Step it back. And let's just do six, so three on each side. Breathe. And step it out. Enough of those, huh? Last one, I'm gonna do these up on the hands and then we'll switch to doing some core stuff uh, either on the ball or on the ground. Um, oh, by the way, if you plan on attending outdoor classes, there will be equipment for you to use, I believe, if the instructor brings it out. Um, but I would recommend bringing your own equipment. Just playing on the air of safety here. All right, so shoulders directly over the wrists, okay? And this time, I'm going to be a little bit closer, so my thumbs are just about touching. But again, not sinking ugh, between the shoulder blades, not doing anything funky with the back or the hips. 
in here. And we're going to reach underneath. People with shoulder injuries, please be careful. Try not to sway very much. Couple more. Last one. And a nice modified down dog. Stretch it out. I'll be right back, folks. Take a quick break, drink some water. Okay, I apologize. I'm a little hungry, so I needed to boss my roommate around, make him get some lunch ready. All right, let's go ahead and switch. I'm going to start on the ball. If you don't have one, you can do everything I'm going to do on the floor, okay? Ball just makes it a little harder. So if you've got the ball, okay, we're just going to roll it out so that our butt is hanging off, right? So my, like my sacrum and my low, low back is still on the, the ball, but my upper body isn't. And adjust your feet, whichever's comfortable. The closer they are to you, the more strain there is on the knee, I feel, okay? And let's just go ahead and do some very small crunches. Really lengthening the spine here, really breathing. Again, these can be done just on the ground with your knees up and your feet flat on the floor. But try to breathe out on the way up. As your body contracts, your lungs are compressed, so breathe out. These are easy compared to those planks, huh? Let's go ahead and just do a nice even 10 more. Deep breaths. Last one should be on your number 10. And go ahead and just take a breather. Nice deep breath. And we're, of course, going to make it harder because that's what we do. Get back into position. Uh, by the way, if you want to, if you have a ball, you can get more range of motion if you kind of curve your back over the ball. Gets a nice stretch out of the core and also makes it work harder because it has a further distance to travel to support your neck. Okay. So this time instead, what I'm going to do is as I do my crunch, I'm going to bring one elbow across. Now, if you're on a ball, make sure you're not rolling. That ball shouldn't move, right? Only you are moving. And bring the elbow across, like to the opposite knee. Get that full range of motion. And if you're on the ground, here, I will show you on the ground. Oh, crab walk back this way. If you're on the ground, you can go ahead and just do some of these, okay? Just go at your own range of motion. And if you're standing, do what we did for our warm up, which was these guys, right? Where you bring your body across, trying to balance. You can stand up against the wall to help you out. A few more. If 
Finish up your last one. And take a break. Haven't even gotten to the butts yet. Just the guts. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's make it a little bit harder, I think. I'm gonna roll out further this time so that my head and my shoulders are still on the ball and I have to support my hips. Not a full bridge, but still have to support the hips. Okay, be careful with this one. This is gonna be pretty tricky. I'm gonna do the best crunch that I can and I'm gonna bring one leg up. Go nice and slow because this is a balance exercise. It's a tricky one. Don't care how fit you are, this one's tough. Should be a lot of work for your hips, your knees, your core. Keep breathing, go nice and slow. If you feel like you need to have your hands out for balance, go ahead and then you can just bring one knee up at a time, okay? Nice modification there. A few more. One more on each side. And go ahead and stretch it out, especially that belly and the lower back. Should have had a better breakfast. All right, just about halfway through class. Let's do one more core exercise and then we'll move to the butts. All right, I wanna work on a side plank and I'm gonna just totally ditch the ball. Again, you can do this on a chair as well. I feel like side plank is actually a lot more about shoulders and spine than it really is about core. But a lot of people tend to do them wrong. See how I sugarcoated that? Um, because they're very difficult. So let's practice. So I'm just going to start on the ground, just like this, OK? With my legs slightly bent, OK? And this will help me get into the position that I want. And this is optional. If you have a shoulder injury, this is, or a wrist injury even, this is pretty nice to have. OK, so we're going to try to get this shoulder we don't want to sink down, okay? So my shoulder is hunched up, and if I translate this to standing, I'm like this, right? It's the same position. We want to create length in the spine. So we use these muscles underneath the armpit here and in the back to bring that shoulder blade down, okay? And let's just try to get that other arm as best we can in line with the bottom arm, okay? And from here, you can cheat, of course, putting one leg back behind you and pushing off of that leg. Try to keep your hips as square as you can. And this is your basic side plank. You can just go up, come back down and break, or you can hold until the end of eternity. That is up to you. So we're reaching, holding, nice and slow. If you feel like your spine is twisting, you may need to bring one leg in front instead, and that will help keep your hips square, okay? Go ahead and do two more on this side. Oh, shoulders. And relax. Stretch out that shoulder and that neck. If the the side planks on the ground are too much for your body, which is fine. Dining room table. Try the dining room table first, right? Just like balancing in like a nice T with one hand on the table. That's a good place to start. And other side. I believe I did six, so let's call it six. 
trying to get the shoulder as even as we can. Don't hunch it. Nice and tall. And of course, if you're ready to do a full on side plank, your feet will be stacked and you'll hold this position as long as you can. But I'm going to just do six. Keep breathing. Oh, and relax. Drink that water. Okay, to the butts, make sure you drink water, giving you an extra water break. I am not going to stop pounding you, especially this time of year. I'd rather you have to take a bathroom break or six than get dehydrated. All right, let's go ahead. I'm just going to start standing, okay? And we're going to Jenga block our body here. Tuck my shirt in. Okay, so we want to make sure that our rib cage isn't in any strange direction over the hips, right? It shouldn't be floating over the hips. I want those ribs directly over the hips, and that's the best alignment that you can do, okay? And we're going to shift our weight just slightly to one side without bending a knee, right? So staying up and out of the hip, kind of penguin walk, okay? To one side, and from here, use your balance if you use your friend if you need to. And from here, we're gonna do some kickback. So the slightly bent knee, toes are gonna stay forward. Forward. Talking mostly to myself on that one because I always tend to open up my foot. You can do the Yoga hands, or if you like, namaste hands are helpful with finding your center. You shouldn't be so going so far that your hips tilt or that you tilt, right? You're activating glutes and lower back. Nice small movement here. A couple more on this side. Hold. Make sure those toes are pointed forwards. Holding. Up and out, nice and tall. And just go ahead and bring it in, take a quick stretch. That's one of those ones that's deceptive. Your standing side is working harder than your moving side. So again, kind of penguin walk. Shift your weight to that other side, nice and tall. And we're gonna keep those toes forward. Lauren, keep the toes forward. And bring that leg back. Nice deep breaths. I have a leaf. I have a leaf on my butt. Glued to my pants. If balance is an issue, I really recommend that you use a support here, but don't lean on it, don't depend on it. It's only there to catch you when you need. Ch test your balance, check your balance, practice. A couple more on this side. And let's hold, toes forward. And go ahead and relax, take a quick stretch. That's a good one for ice skating, by the way. If anybody likes to ice skate in the middle of summer, that's always really fun. That's all going to change, isn't it? But that's a really good one for ice skating because you do need to use a lot of pushing with the back of the body in order to do that. Rollerblading, skateboarding. All right, this time we're going to open up our active foot into an L shape here. So. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to balance on my left first, so I'm going to open up my right foot to the side from the hip, okay? 
make sure that you're standing nice and tall, open it from the side, and you're just gonna bring it back. Just keep the foot flexed and that knee slightly bent, nice and tall. You should be feeling this more in the upper part of the butt now. Okay, knee is slightly bent. It's not about how high you can get your leg up. It's about balance. Keeping that hip open at the hip, right? You're not using your ankle for this. Last one and hold. Those of you in my ballet class, point your back foot, turn out, right? It's good practice for you, right? <laughs> and go ahead and return to neutral. I'm gonna cross one leg over the other. The one I just did is going over top and I'm just gonna do a quick stretch. Another side, open that leg out into an L shape from the hip. Okay, find that balance, nice and tall, and toes out to the side. Squeeze that booty. Try to keep your standing leg uh, in a natural position with your toes forward. I feel that all in my lower back and up here in my gluteus medius. Few more, you can do it. Good, and last one, and hold. Dance people, please point your back foot. Well on your way to becoming beautiful ballerinas. Just gotta get the arms. He's laughing at me, I can tell. And go ahead and relax. Cross that active leg over the other and stretch it out. You can wiggle your butt a little bit, help you stretch the IT band and the hips. All right. You can continue to use your chair if you need to. And I know that we're all sick of squats, but it being uh, picnic season, sitting down on low picnic tables, things like that, <clears throat> we're gonna practice sitting down nice and low. Uh, so I'm gonna start in the chair Take a quick hip stretch, about 10 seconds either side. Relax those glutes. All right. So sitting on the very edge of your seat, if you don't have a seat and you wanna just do air squats, awesome. I really want you to challenge the depth of your squat though, okay? So we're gonna open up those knees to hip width, okay? And those toes are gonna to face forward and the ankles are right underneath the knees. And we're gonna go ahead and we are going to lean it forward, activate that core, do your best. You can, by the way, you can use your momentum to get you up out of the chair, that's fine. Just try not to use your arms because then your back will disengage, okay? So we're holding that core, squeezing butt, squeezing belly, lean it forward and push, hold right here, and then just right back down. Okay, some good squat technique here. Nice low squats. Try not to let your knees wobble. Weight is through the arch and heel on the foot. Couple more. Last one, 
hold. Your low squat may be different than mine, okay? So do your lowest squat, get those quads and glutes burning. Deep breaths, wiggle those toes. And all the way up to the top. Do I have any hikers or backpackers in here? Maybe? I don't know how outdoorsy everyone is here. I would like to work on some lunges, a little, just a few lunges today. <clears throat> I've been working on them a little bit more practically recently. So instead of like, oh, bam, and then trying to get that knee all the way down, which you're fine to do, we're going to do more Tai Chi style. Some of you are like, oh, not Tai Chi. Okay, but we're gonna practice that balance. Penguin, shift your weight to one side, lift that foot up, test your balance down, roll through the feet, lifting that back heel, and you're basically doing a squat, bending that back knee, and then up. And you'll notice, if I keep my back heel down, I can't go anywhere, okay? And I definitely don't wanna think of bending the front knee because, ouch, okay, bend the back knee and hinge forward. This is how you should be picking things up. So just alternating, rolling back through the feet, test the balance, Forward, and then down. Tai Chi people, you are emptying and filling the cup that is your feet, right? A few more of these. Those of you who will be attending my class on Friday at Court One North, um, I am gonna be starting on time and I'm actually gonna be leaving right at 12.50 because my brilliant self has a class right afterwards that I didn't schedule very well. So just so you know, I will be actually on time for once. One more on each side. I should have said that that kind of lunge requires a pretty good deal of flexibility in the foot. So if you have uh, like hammer toe or um, something going on in the arch or bunions, that may be very difficult for you to do, right? In which case you may have to drop that heel down a little bit, but you'll still be able to go down pretty far. You just won't be able to go up as high as I do. And that's fun. Quick quad stretch. I'm just gonna use the chair. My knees on the chair, and I'm standing next to the chair, just bringing that foot up and breathing. I'm curious too if. Um, I don't know how all of you would feel. You, pretty much everyone who's in here has been doing Zoom classes since we started Zoom, but um, would you continue to do Zoom even if the club was completely open and regular? Regular again? Curious to know what you would think and say about that. Quick hamstring stretch, glute stretch, bend those knees, relax the back. And come on up. All right. Um, I don't know who's got a knee injury in here. You all know me well enough by now. Form is more important than depth, especially when it comes to wall sits. Okay. You may have to start pretty shallow. You're going to go to a point at which your knees are directly over your ankles. Okay or you may have to be a little bit higher up. That's fine. I might be a little bit hard to see right now. Okay, but my knees are bent and I'm pressing my core and my back into the wall and my quads and my knees are working pretty hard, okay? 
So let's just go ahead and hold this position here. Nice deep breaths. I am very excited to see all of you again. I've missed the heightened sarcasm that and humor that all of you bring. To come out of this, go ahead and cheat if you have to. Just push your hands off the wall, take a quick stretch. We'll do one more. If you are able, go ahead and go lower. So again, you can use your hands to cheat. I do, okay? Just get into that position. It's holding the position that's hard. It's not getting into it. It's a nice party trick though. Don't let yourself sink down. Squeeze your butt, squeeze your belly. Use your hands as support if you need to, but shoulders down. Breathing. A bit longer. And push yourself off. Oh, knees and take a break. Stretch out those knees, those quads. And I think since we've only got six minutes left, I'm going to go ahead and do some stretches. Do we have any stretch requests? Doesn't have to be a muscle that we stretched in the, or we worked in this class, especially if you went to Ron's class this morning, right? All right. I'm gonna do a really nice quad stretch and hip opener here using my chair. So one of the things that, that yoga is really nice for is working on strength and flexibility. But for a lot of us, this low lunge this type of stretch is just really too difficult, right? So I'm gonna use my chair. That's so much easier, okay? And I am gonna open up my back foot for today and get into this widest position that I can so my hips are on a diagonal now. If you cannot do this, that's okay. Hold your chair, and you're just gonna let your foot kind of hang out and dangle behind you. And you can keep your toes parallel. Try to hold your core in nice and tall and just get a good stretch out of the front hip flexor here, okay? I'm going to start with that actually. And as you get more loosened up and more flexible, you'll be, you'll be able to straighten out that knee most of the way. You can even get a nice ankle stretch here too, you're stretching the uh, shin muscles. It's a really good place to practice your warrior, right? Uh, we can open up that foot. Oh, nice stretch in the groin here. And we can practice our warrior pose, right? Try to relax your booty. To come out of this, return to parallel. And then I just like to drag my leg in and switch sides. Well, I am like on the very edge of my seat, like one butt cheek is totally hanging off the chair. Leave yourself enough space. And again, it may be very different on both sides of your body. Take it easy, go nice and slow. It's a good chance to uh, stretch the arch of your foot too. Make sure that you are lifting nice and tall through the core. Don't, don't sink down. You're not going to get a stretch unless you're up nice and tall. Tall as you can. 
Go ahead and open up if you haven't already. Hips changed direction. It looks like it's snowing outside. <laughs> All the fuzzies. Deep breaths. And go ahead and just bring that leg back in. And I'm just going to sit on the very edge of my seat. Instead of doing a figure four today, I'm just going to cross all the way over so that like the backs of my thighs are the back of my thigh is touching, right? So just cross legged. Leaving this leg floppy, leave it nice and heavy. If anything, pull back on the hip. Don't let the hip get pulled. And I'm just going to kind of lift and pull this knee towards my shoulder. And this one feels really nice on my IT band and my piriformis hip flexors, right? Nice gentle stretch. If you need more, you can kind of, as I'm pulling, like pushing my palm into my hand, uh, knee here, I'm kind of pushing my knee against my palms and that kind of helps get a nice IT band stretch too. I'm gonna finish with a quick figure four and a nice bend, just relaxing the glutes in the back. Come on up nice and slow and other side. You may just have to find for your body what stretches work. My hips are very tight. This is already a stretch. Nice deep breaths. And finish up with that figure four and fold if you can. Don't worry about your back. Just stretch the hip. And come on out nice and slow. I'm just going to put my feet right in front of me with soft knees. Keep them slightly bent. Flex those feet slightly back. And I'm just going to lean and hold my ankles. Just a nice, gentle calf and hamstring stretch here. Nice deep breath. See if you can drop the head. Relax your shoulders. And roll it up nice and slow. Let's just finish with a nice deep breath as usual. We're going to reach those hands to the side. And down. A couple more of those. Inhale all the way up. Oh. Hold breath, hold arms. And exhale. And relax. All 